Welcome to HB RV Lifestyle, the podcast. I am the host, the Honey Badger, here to give it to you straight and transparent about the RV business, as well as other things. Today, I have a lot to get to. We're going to talk about Grand Design RV and their classy motor home they're coming out with. We're going to talk about fifth wheel frame flex and frame failure. We're going to talk about some very positive things that are going on with the podcast and that I may have picked up a brand new source. But where I want to start tonight is with the words clickbait. Now, if you have small children in the room present, this may not be the right time to listen to this episode. There is going to be foul language, a lot of passion, because there are things that are very disappointing to me. I'm sorry, very disappointing to me. And if you're a fan of the show, you know that sometimes I get a little far out there with my language. So I just want to give everybody a fair warning. Uh, Whether you're listening on Spotify, Amazon, iHeart, watching on YouTube. Yeah, just want to give you a heads up, okay? So the words clickbait really mean that someone puts a thumbnail on YouTube, Rumble, TikTok, etc. And they put this eye-catching title that elicits usually a negative emotional response. Okay? And I'm starting to notice that what I call the fear mongers in the YouTube space, TikTok space, etc. are starting to double down on the clickbait material. And the reason why I'm starting with this is because I want to give you the middle ground. Okay, because there's two sides of the coin. There's the corporate RV dealership YouTubers that, oh my God, everything's perfect and innovative and the company can't do anything wrong and it's never the manufacturer's fault and everything is perfect. It's like a fairy tale. And then you have folks like, and I'm sorry, I'm not picking on her, but there's folks like Liz Amazing who use negativity in the industry to fuel her channel and fuel her income. Now, that's not a shot at her. Obviously, she knows she watches the YouTube channel and she listens to the podcast. I've been told by people close to her. And she's never contacted me and said anything bad to me. So obviously she knows I'm not attacking her. A lot of folks feel like I attack her. I'm not attacking her. I just don't like the way she does things. I do think what she does is a necessity for those that are having these Armageddon level issues. But in all fairness, it really seems like a lot of these fear-mongering YouTubers are picking and choosing which battles to fight. Like, I'm sorry, this whole frame failure, frame flex story with Grand Design, you would think that these fear-mongers would be having like daily content about this because there's hundreds, if not thousands of people that own Grand Design Solitudes and Grand Design Momentums that have had a ridiculously bad experience, allegedly, with customer service at Grand Design. You'd think that these fear mongers would be all over it, but they're really not. Okay? Because it's been covered so much. Paving New Paths did a great job. I'm sorry that they end up selling their rig. I just saw that on their uh, YouTube channel. Congratulations to them, but I understand where the process was with them. So I understand that it's it's been a constant thing that has been talked about, but you would think that that would be the next step, but there's not. And then there's, I'm a fan of one of them. I'm a fan of one of the fear mongers. I'm a fan of crappy RV. 
I'm like a little schoolboy when I listen to him. And not in the way you're thinking about, okay? So you guys with nasty minds, don't you dare think about that. This is mostly like me watching Transformers or Darkwing Duck or, or God, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the animated series. Yes, I'm aging myself a little bit, okay? But I feel like that, like that little kid, because he's so good. But there's a lot of anger in these fear mongers. Because, as we all know, sex sells. Fear sells. Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, ABC, whatchamacallit, Emma call it, who gives a fuck? They all use fear to make money. But that's not reality. So the fairy tale and the Armageddon are two extremes. There's a middle ground. And it's not balance. It's just there's a middle ground. If someone is having a problem with a Keystone uh, Cougar travel trailer and they the slide out doesn't work and they've had just nothing but problems with the travel trailer, not every Keystone Cougar has that problem. Okay? Forest River, yes, they have the most recalls this year in 2024 compared to every auto industry manufacturer. Absolutely. But here's the context and something that crappy RV does not say. Maybe he doesn't know. Maybe he hasn't been educated in it. That's a very big possibility. But the context is is Forest River builds more products, not just RVs, not just travel trailers. They build dump dump trailers, agriculture trailers, boats. They are a large recreational manufacturer. In most years, they build more product overall than a single auto industry maker, auto manufacturer. Not every, but for the most part, in the United States, Forest River makes more products than most of the are of the automakers. Look it up. So, of course, they're going to be number one in recalls. The reason why Jayco is further down is because Thor Industries... Watch this, guys. This is context for you. Thor Industries treats every single brand or every single division, Keystone, Jayco, Heartland, etc., as separate entities. They don't lump them into one warranty claim system, okay? So you have two different philosophies by the two biggest umbrella companies, okay? Forest River, with almost every product they build, goes under one warranty portal. So no matter if it's a Coachman, a Cherokee, a Berkshire, a pontoon boat, every single service department, for the most part, does all the warranty claims through one system. So everything that gets reported to the federal agencies is done through one portal. Keystone does not merge their portal with Heartland or Jayco or Thor Motor Coach or Tiffin. They all have separate entities of how they deal with warranty. Airstream is not connected to Keystone when it comes to warranty claims. So we have to understand this type of context when we start listening to people who are angry. And no, I'm not picking on him. I like him. I love Crappy RV. I'll never say anything bad about him. He's fabulous. I think what he's going through with his paradigm is absolute bullshit. And by the way, brother, if you are a fan of this channel, I want you to know that I made a phone call on your behalf and I shoved my foot 
up a few people's asses about your shower problem because I think that's absolutely fucking ridiculous. Okay? But there's got to be some context and stuff, okay? There's nothing wrong with people pointing out the faults. There's nothing wrong with people speaking out and saying, Jesus Christ, I have had like zero, like I've spent more time in service than I have out on the road. That needs to be said. People need to know that. But people also need to know that is not everybody's experience. That isn't, that isn't even the majority of the industry's experience. The majority of the community doesn't have major problems with their rigs. Okay? Not everybody. Here's the biggest problem. This is the biggest issue in the world. Okay? When we're happy... When we're content, when we're having a good when we're having a good experience, typically we don't go give five star reviews. It's very rare. If you go on the internet and you go on Yelp, you go look on Google, most of the five star reviews out there are paid for one way or the other. I won't tell you what company I worked for, but there was a company I worked for that would give customers, they would go into finance, and the finance manager would ask, did you guys have a good experience? Would you consider your experience to be one, two, three, four, or five star? And if the folks said four or five star, they were given a gift card for probably between $25 and $50, depending on the size of the family, to McDonald's or Carl's Jr., or something of that nature, if they sat down and actually wrote out their review right then and there while they still thought about it. Because most folks will go home with their car, with their boat, with their RV, and they go sit on the couch. It's been a long day. They've spent three, four hours signing paperwork and doing test drives and doing walkthroughs. And they're like, nah, they just don't care. They're happy. They're content. But when shit goes wrong, within 30 seconds, a one-star review is put up. Nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying there's something wrong with that. I'm just telling you that the super majority of people are not going to go and take their time to write a good review about something. My wife was paid by Amazon companies, people who sold through Amazon, to give reviews. Paid. Gift card, free products. All you got to do, ma'am, is just give us a review. Now, they didn't say it had to be a five star, but they were paying people to get reviews. Because it's not something that's considered an everyday thing. Okay, so whether it's Forest River, whether it's Keystone, whether it's Jayco, whether it's stuff I sell or whether it's stuff that I don't sell, not everything is a piece of crap. Not everything is a crappy RV. Not every frame is going to break. And that's a great segue into the next conversation, which is we need to talk about frame failure slash frame flex specifically with Keystone High Country and Grand Design RV. Okay, I want to update some folks. Uh, well, update you folks, I should say. I've received five fresh emails on Keystone Montana fifth wheels. All five are second-hand owners. All five did not buy it new. Okay. But all five of them owned either a 2016 to a 2020. And correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm in the comments, in the comments section, if I messed up, but because I don't have my email up. But five of them have frame flex problems. One of them with major frame failure. Okay, so that brings my count up to 11 Keystone 
Montana high countries that I've received information on. Okay, so we're, we so if you actually look at the numbers, the number one and number two are tied, pretty much tied for the biggest problems that I have heard about that people have reached out to me. And we're up over a thousand people now. We're talking more than a thousand people have reached out to me in one way or another to talk about frame failure or frame flex with their fifth wheel. Number one and number two, which cover pretty much a super majority, close to now over, probably pretty close to 90% now, are Grand Design Solitudes and Grand Design Momentums. These folks are allegedly having such big problems that they're being treated like absolute third-class citizens or fourth-class citizens, whatever you want to use a cliche for they've been treated so badly that they're being passed off of Chris Holland onto some guy named Mel I got one person that told me about it over the phone now I've heard about it from over 20 people have updated me and said that Chris Holland is no longer allowed to deal with most of these cases, that they're giving it to this guy, Mel, who pretty much is a deflection artist, is how they put it. That's the allegation. But the third most is now Keystone, Montana, high country. This is going to hurt because if there's more people out there that start re reaching out to me. And you know this isn't going to stop. This is going to be a long, drawn-out process. But the more people that reach out, the more it's starting to tell me that there was a problem from 2016 to 2020 so far. Now, I don't know why it's not at the why Montana itself is not at the level of high country or alpine. I don't know why they're not having as many problems. I do not understand it yet. Of course, I'm not an engineer and I'm not a welder. But what I can tell you is that when it comes to Keystone Cougar, it comes to Flagstaff. Uh, by Forest River, Rockwood by Forest River, Cedar Creek by Forest River. There are scattered ones here and there about different Forest River products or uh, a Mobile Suites. I got one on a Mobile Suites. I got a couple Arctic Foxes. I got a couple Alpha Wolves or Alpha Fox or whatever the hell that Cherokee product is. But it's not nearly the problem that Grand Design is allegedly having. But what pisses me off about Grand Design RV is not only are they treating people poorly, allegedly, but now people are reaching out to me in the masses stating that Grand Design RV allegedly will not reimburse the hotel rooms for people to stay in while they get their coach worked on. So let me make sure I'm hearing this right. They Most people spent over $100,000 for this momentum or this solitude. It's your fucking problem. It's nobody else's. This is your problem. You're at the forefront of these allegations. You have caused people to question Every single other manufacturer where fifth wheel sales have come to pretty much a standstill when it comes to the big 30, what I call high profile or high, high ceiling fifth wheels. Montana, Mobile Suites, Riverstone, uh, Pinnacle, if I miss somebody, sorry, but etc. Cedar Creek. So now you're going to treat people even more like crap. You're going to fuck them over on their hotel bill? Are you serious? If someone has to stay in Elkhart, Indiana, 
for two or three weeks waiting for their rig to get fixed. Think about that. That's a lot of money. You pretty much probably could have spent four or five grand more, stayed home and had a welder fix it for you. A trained welder that's local to you rather than having to drag your damn fifth wheel all the way up there. It, it, I'm sorry, if that is true, if that's 100% accurate, I'm going to tell you something. This is going to piss some people off. If you're buying a grand design product of any kind, you're now a part of the problem. You're not a part of the solution. The only way that we're going to change grand designs motivation or Winnebago's motivation behind these allegations is if the entire RV community stopped buying Grand Design. If Grand Design fifth wheels and travel trailers and toy haulers sit on dealership lots and don't move, that means they're not going to build anymore. You want to talk about the biggest boycott in industry history? They'll change their tune if their pocketbooks are getting hit. So be very, very careful. If you're listening to this podcast and you're considering a, a grand design product, Go watch all these videos by everybody that has been treated horribly by Grand Design RV and realize you're supporting that. Every time you spend money on a grand new Grand Design product, you are allowing Grand Design to continue their bad behavior. So until they actually deal with the allegations and speculation against them, the industry as a whole, including dealerships, should boycott them. Period. I think every single RV dealership corporate YouTuber should delete every video that is about that is positive about a grand design product or not delete it put it on private cuz then you can re-release it after grand design wakes up and decides to be on a better behavior i call on don clark's resignation too and i'm going to tell you why here in a minute i'm going to put the link to this article from rvbusiness.com it's titled grand design rv to debut first motorized rv lineage class c but what i want to go over is what don clark said the lineage name recognizes that the brand is an extension of our strong grand design foundation while simultaneously representing what is passed forward over time. It recognizes our relentless commitment to being both dealer-centric and customer-focused, said Don Clark, President and CEO of Grand Design RV. We are looking forward to bringing the quality, innovation, and service we are known for in the towable market over to a brand new product and segment, Lineage Class C, will be our first foray into motorized, but there will be much more to follow. I call on Don Clark's resignation right now. How in the Sam Blue fucking hell are you going to release a Class C motorhome when you can't even do the right thing, allegedly, with your fifth wheel owners that are having Armageddon level problems? If Winnebago is listening, please fire that man. He is destroying that brand.
You know who is the most important people in the industry? The customers, the RVers. The community is more important than this fucking guy. You are, this is my professional opinion. If this happened at Keystone, Forest River, any other manufacturer, there would have been a press release real quick and a recall. If Columbus Fifth Wheels was having that big of a problem, a guy named Doug Getter would have already had ready rock and roll, some kind of press release, and would have attacked it instead of sitting behind a desk wondering when his tea time is. I've talked to a lot of people in the industry over the last four months. We're not talking about customers. We're talking about people that work on the factory side of the industry and their opinion of Mr. Clark is that he is a complete snake. And that he does not care about the customer. He cares about his bank account. And if that's true, if what people tell me is absolutely 100% true, Then he needs to resign now, go take his big bank account, and disappear out of the industry. Get out. Don't come back. Go retire on some island. Because you are the reason. It's already tough enough out there for dealerships, private party sellers. It's already tough enough right now because the economy's not good, interest rates are up, Now this is just doubling the problem. But if you attacked it a year ago, we would not be where we're at today. That's a fact of life. Okay. But you know what else is a fact of life? There's some excitement going on. Real excitement. I can't name names. There are four total people. No, if you include my daughters, there's six total people that know what happened and they're going to keep quiet because I want to keep this very calm and quiet. But I got to speak to someone uh, over the last couple of days. In fact, multiple people, but specifically... I got to talk to somebody that's very deep into the industry. And that conversation validated what I'm doing. That's what it really did for me. Guys, they're listening. Folks, they are listening to my podcast. The executives of the industry are listening. So don't be afraid to send me the information. LevingstonRVServices at gmail.com Don't be afraid to talk about it with me. Even if you signed an NDA, even if you signed a non-disclosure agreement, I will never break your trust. I will never give away my sources, ever. And I think I have a new one. Because the conversation that I had was completely different than what I expected. I expected to be called some names. I expected to be called, told that I'm an idiot. I got, I mean, I I expected just, how do I put it? I mean, I just expected the worst. And it was so amazing, the conversation. And then the next day, that was on Tuesday, the next day, which is yesterday, I had a six 
hour conversation with another executive in the RV industry that did nothing but validate everything I said and that I've said for the last couple months and even told me that it's bullshit that I end up losing my sources for a while. And told me the next time that I run into that situation to give her slash him a phone call. I'm not going to give the person away. Okay. I'm just going to say that the connections that I'm developing are getting stronger. Their ears are getting bigger. And they're paying attention. Uh, I RVtravel.com featured one of my videos I did on a motorhome. Uh, I got contacted by a few um, media outlets that's within the RV industry that is discussing doing an interview with me. It's just validation that we're doing the right thing. Speaking up is doing the right thing. We as a community, we as RV dealerships, we as future RVers need to stand up and speak up when something's not right. Silence will get nothing done. We are in an era where I believe that our voices as a community is going to drive manufacturers to be more innovative. But guys, there's a downside to this. Instead of the same old cookie cutter stuff, the one thing crappy RV guy does not cover, at least I haven't heard him cover yet, and I'd love to see him dive into it himself, is the more innovation they start developing, the more problems they're going to have. The more cookie cutter they keep things, the less moving parts that they put in these things, the less technology they put in these things, the less problems that will occur. But that is not the expectations of the community. That is not the expectations of the lifestyle. There are expectations of new, innovative technologies, lithium battery, solar kits, inverters, all, this, all these moving parts to stop using generators, pretty much. I mean, let's think about it. When, when it comes to all the electronics, that alliance that I filmed the other day has probably one of the best charging systems I've ever seen. I mean, I could run one air conditioner, the microwave, the refrigerator, off the batteries. But I can only imagine that if one little thing goes wrong, <laughs> I can only imagine troubleshooting that problem. Remember, folks, they're not built perfectly. And technology is going so fast that nobody slows down to say, hey, wait a minute, should we, should we re be really doing that? Old school portable generator rather than creating all this weird technology stuff like inverters and big solar panels and lithium batteries. I, I seriously have watched people at campsites with those kind of setups and they pull their hair out of their head, hair out of their head. 
And the guy with the little portable generator, he lifted out of the back, the, out of the back of his truck. Sorry, I'm a little tongue tied. Rolls it over, has a key start remote, turns it on, and voila. He has one solar panel, maybe 100, 190, 220 watt solar panel with a 20 amp charge controller, a couple cheap ass batteries, and he don't have any problems. Well, he doesn't have the problems the guy with all that technology does. Okay? Lippert is a part of the frame problem. But if they were the entire problem, why is it that the majority of brands not named Solitude and not named Momentum have Armageddon level issues with those frames? Great question, right? I mean, there's Jayco's that have, have people with Jayco's that have reached out to me off and on. I finally got my first Alliance. Uh, I got a couple of Montanas, a couple of um, one Riverstone, one Mobile Suites, one Redwood, a couple Arctic Foxes, you know, all these companies. And the information I get, the super majority of it is Grand Design RV, Solitude, and Momentum. So explain to me how Lippert is the biggest problem. Right? I mean, everybody's going to have a different opinion about that. It's food for thought. And that's how we're going to close it out. Until next time, have a great night.